Hi guys, it's Cindy here from Hooked on Crafts and today I'm going to be showing you how to crochet scrubbies. These are great items to have for craft shows or just to have around the house or to give to family and friends. Now one of the first questions you're going to have is what do you make your scrubbies out of? And for me, I make mine out of a nylon netting, a matte nylon netting that I find at Joanne Fabrics. They're usually over by the tool section in the fabric department. And I buy 13 yards of each color that I am going to make scrubbies out of. Now this is going to make a lot of scrubbies, 13 yards, but I prefer to do it this way so that I don't have to tie the ends together. I also prefer to buy mine at Joanne Fabrics rather than Hobby Lobby because they have a more stiff, coarse netting that to me just makes a better scrubby. So when you get your scrubby material at home, your nylon netting, you are going to take it and you are going to fold it nice and neat upon itself. And I like to use clothespins just to keep it in place and from slipping around while I'm trying to cut it. And you'll see me move those along as I start to cut um, the, all the strips. And generally I will take mine out and I will cut two inch strips out of my nylon netting and just kind of lay all those out. And again, guys, it's a scrubby. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, it's approximately two inches. Sometimes you'll get some sections that are going to be a little bit thicker. Sometimes they're going to be a little bit thinner. Um, I say just roll with it. Uh, use what you have. The netting is not going to lay extremely flat all the time. And sometimes it's, it's a little tough to work with. But again, just try to do the best you can to keep them as uniform as possible in two inch strips. Now you could use rotary cutters and that kind of stuff for this, but I don't have any of that. So I just lay it all out on my coffee table and cut it in two inch strips. And then once I get one strip cut, I am going to put my clothespins back on again to keep it from sliding around while I'm cutting it. And I just find that it keeps my strips more uniform. Now, once you cut a strip out, each strip is going to have four layers to it. And you'll see me show you that here in just a second. Each strip has four layers because you've doubled it over and it's folded over. So what I do then is I will take each strip and make it into four balls. Each ball will make one part of your scrubby. For this project, you're going to need two balls of netting, I use an eye sized hook. You're going to need some scissors and you're going to need a yarn needle. Okay guys, now you are going to have to have some crochet knowledge in order to be able to follow along with this part. But what you're going to do is basically crochet three rounds with your netting. And first of all, I'm going to chain four. And then I am going to double chain in the fourth stitch from the hook 11 times. So you will have 12 double chains all together once you get finished. And I'm going to speed this up so that you can watch me do it. But again, you're just making a basic round like you would if you were making a hat or a coaster or anything like that. So... Once you get your 11 double chains into that fourth stitch from the hook, you are going to then join it with a slip stitch. And that is round one. Once you're finished with round one and you got your slip stitch in there, you are going to chain two. And then you are going to do two double chains in each stitch all the way around. And again, guys, this is just like making a hat or a coaster. And I'm going to speed it up so that you can watch me do it. But it is basically two double chain stitches in every stitch. Now, I mentioned that these were great craft show sellers. And um, what I would do with them when I was doing craft shows is I would make it. I would get all my netting and I would cut it into strips and then I would have this huge bag full of nylon netting balls of all colors and, and such. 
And then as I would watch TV or if I would get a little bit of time or if I was outside watching my kids play, I would just take some of them out with me and I would crochet a bunch of these up. And then I would stick them all in this basket and no matter how many of them I would make up, I would sell each and every one of them before the craft show was over. As I get to the end of this round, again, you are gonna slip stitch back into the first stitch and then you are going to chain two for the next round and you are gonna do two double chains in the first stitch and then one double chain in the next stitch and you are going to repeat that pattern all the way around this scrubby. So two double chains, one double chain, two double chains, one double chain, all the way around. And then again, you are going to slip stitch them together. Um, again, I've sped this up. This is not how fast I usually crochet. Um, honestly, these don't take a long time to make, but the nylon netting is not the easiest uh, thing to crochet with. So sometimes you have to go slow and sometimes it makes your fingers hurt after you make a lot of them, but just because it's so bulky, uh, the netting is when you're crocheting it. Um, I sell these guys in my Etsy shop, which I will link down below. Um, usually I sell them in sets of two and I sell them for $4.25. At the craft shows, I would sell them for $2 a piece, sometimes two and a quarter, depending on what my booth rental fee was for the craft show and, uh, how many other vendors were there also with scrubbies. Um, a lot of people make their scrubbies different ways. I generally make a double scrubby. Um, so as you can see, we use two balls of netting and I will make a front and a back. And as you'll see here in a few minutes, we're gonna crochet those together. But some people will sell only a one layered scrubby and typically they sell those for a dollar. Personally, I think those are kind of wimpy. I don't like to use them. I want something that's gonna hold up for a while and something I can get my hand around to wash my dishes with or clean off my counters with. And these are great. They're not gonna scratch your pans or, or anything else. So now that we've got this one side completed, you're gonna make another one exactly the same way. And I did not finish either one of these off yet. Typically what I will do is I'll see which one has the most at the end or which one I like the best for the front versus the back. And then you're gonna finish the one that's gonna go in the back off just by pulling it through, cut, cutting the tail off and pulling it through. And then each scrubby guys has a front and a back. And you'll see me lift it up here. One side is gonna be more finished than the other side. And you are going to put the wrong sides together leaving both the pretty sides on the outside. And typically I line them up right where I finished. And excuse me for going out of frame here cause it's just the, the netting kind of goes everywhere. So you just kind of got to bear with it here. And I'll put both sides together. And then basically I am going to do a single stitch through both layers of scrubbies all the way around. Now, I told you earlier that I buy 13 yards of material and I cut them down. Well, sometimes it seems like, I don't know if I crochet bigger or tighter or if they mess up when they're counting the yards at the counter because sometimes I get a lot of them and it's easy to mess up. But if you do have to, if you run out of netting I'm going to show you here in a minute how to add more netting onto your yarn so to speak um, so that you can continue and you'll see me I'm just kind of and again you, it's kind of a slow process because you got to get through both layers and they're thick layers And you're just going to go all the way around, stitch them together. And this is going to make your double layered scrubby. If you do happen to run out of the yarn, basically what you're going to do is what I do is I will take my finger and I will kind of poke a hole in the netting, not too close to the end. And then I will thread the other piece through there and just kind of double it over. 
and just extend my yarn this way. And then you're going to continue to crochet with that and you're gonna crochet that right into your work. And I've never had them fall apart or come loose by doing this. Um, it's just an easy way. Some people will tie them into knots. I personally don't like the knots in my work so that's why I do it this way. And you're just gonna go ahead and single chain all the way around and you'll see it's kind of bunching up in the middle and it'll do that once I get them um, completely stitched up around the edges we'll flatten them out and make them lay flatter so as you're watching here and a lot of times when you're cutting your netting you will have extra little pieces that aren't quite long enough to make a whole side of a scrubby out of or you'll just see on the edges they get uneven and stuff. I will even wind those little scraps up to put uh, in my bag so that if I do run out as I'm going around the last round of uh, stitching them together, I use that netting to um, help extend my yarn so that I can get all the way around without having to use a whole nother ball of netting. So here you'll see me, I'm just finishing it off, cutting cutting it and then pulling it through the stitch. Now guys, you gotta be kinda careful when you're doing this because you can rip it completely off and then you won't have enough of a tail to weave in the ends. But you'll see me here, I just kinda flatten it out and if you have any little pieces sticking out, I just trim those off. Again, they're from where we attached the extra piece on, and I just trim those off, it's fine. Again, they're not gonna come apart because you've crocheted all that in, it's just a little piece sticking out. And then I'm going to thread my yarn needle, and then I am just going to tuck in the tails. And I like to go back and forth at least three times. Um, be careful. Uh, not to get your needle inside one of the little netting holes because it will sometimes be really hard to pull it through and you'll see me kind of struggle here with it. But if you actually get it under the stitch two or three times, you'll be fine. Um, just take your time and, and weave those ends in carefully so that... Uh, you don't get your needle stuck. I have bent a needle trying to pull it through because it got stuck in one of those holes. And uh, so I've rained a couple needles that way, but I guess as many of these as I made, a few broken needles isn't too terrible. And then you're just gonna trim off the end once you've ran it through two or three times and you're gonna do the same thing with the other side. Again, um, if this went too quick for you, please let me know down in the comments below. I'll be happy to maybe make one for absolute beginners where you can see me show you each and every stitch. Um, this is really for someone who knows how to crochet a little bit, who's done a little bit of crocheting, and maybe you just want to add scrubbies to uh, your assortment for your craft shows. Again, they're just easy money. Um, people love them. And I, I just liked adding them to my booth. Typically when I was at craft shows, I sold a ton of hats. That's where I made a lot of money. And I also sewed bows. Um, but scrubbies just add that little extra income. And you can see guys, the scrubby is the size of my hand. And that's why I have so many sales on my Etsy shop. That's why I have people come back for my scrubbies. Uh, they will hunt me down in my craft, uh, in, the, in the craft shows uh, looking for my booth because they bought scrubbies for me before and they know that they are great quality. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you make lots of money making scrubbies for your craft shows. Thanks guys for watching. Have a great day.